These are just words and are not enough to contain you. Oh, Jesus, just words and can never suffice to acclaim you. Father, just words and I have so few. I run out too fast to speak them to you. Father, just words, and I have so few. I run out too fast to speak them to you. Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter. If y'all will stand, yeah, go ahead and stand up to your feet. We'll get started. All right, if you will clap along as we rejoice in God's holiness this morning and celebrate Him. Anxious for nothing but holy ambition that we would be sons and daughters of vision. A few hill tide, Jesus, our center, that we would recall what angels remember. And that we would remember you are holy, God over us. You are holy, Lord God Almighty. You are holy, God over us till time. All right, let's go back to the top. That's how this song goes. Sing it with us. Anxious for nothing but holy ambition that we would be sons and daughters of vision of you hill tide jesus our center that we would recall what angels remember that we would remember and that we would remember you are holy god over us you are holy Lord God Almighty, you are holy, God over us, you are holy, God over us, you are holy, Lord God Almighty, you are holy, God over us, Hill. Lord Almighty is with us. And the God of Jacob, our fortress, and the Lord Almighty is with us. And the God of Jacob, our fortress, oh, oh, you are holy, but you are holy. God over us, you are holy, Lord God Almighty, you are holy, God over us, and you are holy, God over us, you are holy, Lord God Almighty, you are holy, God over us. 
I am so excited. We have had some fantastic services, and you are in for a treat if this is your first taste of the weekend services this morning, then this is going to be a time that is going to be a huge celebration, celebrating the greatest event in the history of mankind, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I hope that that power finds its way in your life. Amen. To help us celebrate... Uh, Easter in a, in a wonderful way, and it's kind of the climax of our American Idols series that we've been sharing about how to put God, Jesus Christ, as the central idol of your life. We've invited Jeff Johnson and his group. Now, you guys have seen Jeff Johnson on some of the video we've shared with you. He was on season four. Now, some of these guys, they know a little bit. They saw that you, you kind of went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gene Simmons, <laughs> and they saw uh, that, but they don't know really what happened after that, what God did in your life. So share us, with us a little bit. Cool. Um, yeah, I went to Hollywood for, uh, for the season of American Idol, season four. Carrie Underwood won, and she's not really doing well in the music industry right now, so <laughs> they should have chose me. Um, I'm just kidding. If you don't know, she's like the top seller, so I guess they chose correctly. I lost. Um, but uh, it's just been a cool ride. I mean, it was cool that God led me down that path. It was kind of a hard time for me to get cut and all these people that believed in me. But God's taught me so much uh, through that and just led me to a good place of being at peace over that. And uh, it's been cool. It's been cool how God has used that for ministry purposes and brought just being able to be here this morning. It's, um, God has used that for so much. So that's cool. The coolest benefit for us, obviously, for ORBC here in Salisbury, is that you're able to be here with us this morning and help us to celebrate Easter. Amen. This crowd is the liveliest crowd. You guys are like in, like clapping, and we're with it. It's awesome. We saved the best for last. Amen. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about uh, the other members of the band, and cool. let us know about those. Yeah, guys. we're from we're a band from Dallas, and so we we travel, lead worship full time. We're not on staff at a church, but this is just what we get to do. And um, over here, this is high, and <laughs> so hi hi. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay, and back here, this is Jimmy, back here, this is John, and over here, we have Rick, and so that's, that's the band, and this is what we get to do, and we love it, so. Well, we're excited to have all of them to help us today to be able to have a wonderful experience as we worship together. Let me set a little bit of uh, ground rules and some tips to let you know. First of all, if you have any electronic device that makes any kind of noise disengage now that will help us and everyone around you uh, turn it on vibrate or something like that and uh, that way it gives your neighbors permission if it goes off and after I've already given this announcement they all have permission to steal it from you and smash it on the ground all right <laughs> I'm just kidding secondly if uh, if you have small children with you you decided to go ahead and bring them in here that's fine but we just ask if they begin to be disruptive would you please take them outside in the lobby or we would even better we would love to have them in child care because we have so many workers who volunteered this morning in a secure check-in environment to love on those guys in an area where they can really receive special attention we would love the privilege of being able to do that. So we would just ask that today would be a wonderful time of celebration for you and for your family together. It's wonderful to get all of ORBC kind of in one place at one time, and that is a fantastic power for us to worship together. Now, if you're visiting with us, I want to make sure that you're aware at the end of the service we'll take up an offering, but we're not asking for your money. <gasps> a Baptist preacher just said, don't worry. In fact... Our service is a ministry back to you. We would ask if you're a first-time visitor with us. Uh, now, by the way, if you've been visiting for like three years or more, <laughs> this part's not for you. Uh, 
Would you take a moment, and there's a tear out in the very back, in the inside of your bulletin, the keeping in touch. Take a moment and fill that information out for us. We'll take up an offering at the end. You can make that your offering to us. And so would you do that for us? We would love to be able to get that. Hey, find five people somewhere near around you and say, man, I'm glad you waited for this service. You guys get your hands together In some marvelous light I'm running Out of darkness Out of shame By the cross you are The truth You are the life You are the way I once was fatherless a stranger with no hope, but God has rescued us this morning. We celebrate. I once was fatherless, a stranger with no hope. Your kindness wakened me, wakened me from my sleep. Your love it beckons deeply. A call to come and die by grace, by grace now I will come and take this life, take your life. Sin has lost its power, and death has lost its sting. We rejoice from the grave you've risen, victoriously. Into marvelous light I'm running Out of darkness, out of shame By the cross you are the truth You are the life, you are the way My dead heart now is alive My dead heart now is speeding my deepest stains now clean Your breath fills up my lungs Now I'm free Now I'm sin is lost Sin has lost its power And death has lost its sting And from the grave you've risen Victoriously into marvelous light I'm running Out of darkness, out of shame By the cross you are the truth You are the life, you are the way Into marvelous light I'm running Out of darkness, out of shame By the cross you are the truth you are the life, you are the way. Lift my hands and spin around. See the light that I've found. Oh, the marvelous light, marvelous light. Yeah, sing that again. Lift my hands and spin around. See the light that I've found. Oh, the marvelous light, marvelous light. Sin has lost its power, and death has lost its sting. From the grave you've risen, victoriously. Just your voice into marvelous light, I'm running. Out of darkness, out of shame By the cross you are the truth You are the life, you are the One more time 
And tomorrow's light I'm running Out of darkness, out of shame By the cross you are the truth You are the life, you are the way Get your hands together. The tomb is empty and we rejoice and celebrate in God this morning for all he's done for us. His love falls on you this morning. If you don't know him, he is absolutely in love with you. Did you feel the mountains tremble? you hear the oceans roar when the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ the risen one did you feel did you feel the people tremble did you hear the singers roar when the lost began to sing of Jesus Christ, the saving one. We see you moving. We can see that God's moving. A mighty river through the nations. Young and old will turn to Jesus. Bring why you have me gates. Prepare the way. Feel the darkness. Did you feel the darkness tremble when all the saints join in one song and all the streams flow as one river? So wash away our brokenness. I want to sing that again. We're going to sing that verse again. Did you feel the darkness tremble? I want you guys to realize this morning that death has been defeated, Satan has no power over us. God's love and grace abounds, and so we triumph in Him, and through Him alone we boast only through Him this morning. Did you feel the darkness tremble? Did you feel the darkness tremble when all the saints join in one song? And all the streams flow as one river to wash away our brokenness. See you moving, oh God. We can see that God's moving. A time of jubilee is coming. When young and old will turn to Jesus. Fling wide, you heavenly gates. Prepare the way of the risen Lord. Prepare the Oh, 
joy Dancers to dance upon injustice yeah. One more time, open up the doors and open up the doors. Let the music play. Let the streets resound with singing. Songs that bring your hope and songs that bring your joy. Dancers to dance upon injustice. Amen. You guys can be seated. Man, it's so awesome to celebrate this morning with you guys. Just the joy and, and uh, just to, just, we come together just to rejoice and it's so great. And um, man, I feel the Lord all over this place. And so we want to, uh, once again, not boast in anything but the Lord this morning. And we want to turn the attention and all focus to Him. And um, man, how worthy is He this morning of it, just to re remember and reflect. And uh, we've sung this song maybe a uh, hundred times, some of us that are Chris Tomlin fans, maybe a thousand million times. Um, but it's just a song that says, how great is our God? And it could be so easy for us just to proclaim that this morning and not feel anything and just go, yeah, it's great. God's great. Heard it a thousand times. Um, but the reality is kind of what I just said in that song is just that the enemy has no place over us. And I just love the picture of God looking down on us this morning and uh, rejoicing and the louder that we sing it. The louder that this place shouts it out, uh, whether you can sing or whether you cannot sing and your voice sounds like a bunch of squirrels fighting. I don't know what that means. But um, if that's what your voice sounds like, we still want you to sing too. You're welcome this morning. Um, but we want you guys just to proclaim this from the depth of who you are. And maybe if you can't sing this with truth this morning, maybe just sit back and, and just go, all right, God, teach me through this. Um, let's just do that and just respond how you feel that this morning, whether that's hands raised or standing or uh, whatever the Lord leads you and prompts you to do in your worship. So sing this with us. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide but it trembles at his voice it trembles at his force how great is our God sing with me how great is our God Oh, we'll see how great and how great is our God. He's ageless. Age to age, he stands. And time is in his hands. He's beginning and the end. Beginning and the end, the Godhead three in one. He's the Father, Spirit, and Son. He's the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb.
with truth. No other name is greater than the name of Jesus Christ. He's the name above all names. And He's worthy of all praise. And my heart will see how great is our God. time just your voice how great is our God how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and oh we'll see how great and how great is our God Take out your notes this morning because we're going to talk about what Easter does in transforming our lives. Because today we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, I don't know if you realize it or not, but not every church believes that Jesus raised from the dead. In fact, many of you remember from the Da Vinci Code, even to many of the PBS specials, many people speculate that maybe Jesus didn't really die upon the cross. In fact, I love the radio uh, preacher J. Vernon McGee. He's kind of a no-nonsense Bible teacher. He's gone home to be with the Lord, but his program continues on the air. And one woman wrote in to J. Vernon McGee, shocked. She said, our preacher said that on Easter, Jesus just passed out on the cross and fainted, and in fact his uh, disciples nursed him back to health. What do you think? J. Vernon McGee re wrote back in response and on the radio said, Dear sister, I want you to beat your preacher with a leather whip for 39 strokes. Then I want you to nail him to a cross, hang him in the sun for six hours, run a spear through his heart, and bomb him, place him in an airless tomb for three days, and you see if he's nursing back to health. <laughs> well, the fact is, Jesus Christ understood that his mission, in fact, was to die. 
but not to stay dead. In fact, that's what the resurrection was really all about. Even before he went to the cross, he looked at his disciples. Look in your notes in John 14, and he said this to them. He said, in just a little while, the world will no longer see me. But you're going to see me because I am alive. And you're about to come alive. Now, what on the earth could he possibly have meant? He looks at a group of disciples who obviously are breathing, their hearts are beating, and he says, you're about to come alive. Jesus was talking about a dimension of life that the disciples had not yet experienced. In fact, would not be experienced until the resurrection because, dear friend, Easter changed everything. Look in your notes in 2 Corinthians 5. The Bible says, Jesus, he included everyone in his death so that everyone could also then be included in his life. In fact, in his resurrection life, a far better life than people have ever lived on their own. That's what Easter is all about. Easter is about coming alive and experiencing the better life that Jesus Christ wants to give you. I I don't know how many of you in here, I've kind of gotten addicted to this show, the TV series called Lost. Are there anybody else in here you're willing, brave enough to say, yeah, I watch that show. I mean, it drives me crazy. Every week I think they're going to solve something and they just introduce a new mystery. Uh, It's just a constant tease, it seems like. Well, the whole premise of the show is that a major commercial airline, uh, airplane uh, crashed on a deserted island, what they thought was a deserted island. Forty-eight people survived the crash. And when they really reached the end of all hope of believing that a, that a boat or a rescue mission is on the way, they begin to, uh, begin to starve to death. They realize they're going to have to eke out some sort of existence on this island. They're going to have to be able to gather enough food and enough water just to survive. And it's really tough the first season. They're really difficult just to even be able to survive on this island. But we discover in season two that all of the while that these guys are living on a beach on this side of the island, barely living on the other side of the island, is a whole other community. In fact, they're living in the lap of luxury. They're living in a compound. They're eating ice cream while these people on the same island are barely living. Gang, that is a metaphor for life because I know a lot of people just like that. They're on the same planet. They may even be in the same household, but they're just barely getting by. Life for them is just existence, and some people really have no idea what they're missing. When I was a baby, my mother had the audacity to feed me some sort of sadistic concoction known as Gerber baby food. <laughs> you know, it, when you become a parent, you actually start tasting these things, you know, wondering what you're putting in the mouth of your child, but you only do that once. <laughs> and then by faith, you believe this kid must like it. <laughs> And as a baby, you know, that's your first exposure. You think, this must be what eating is all about. And you put some years behind you, you come into the teenage years, and you discover a new dimension. It's called SpaghettiOs. <laughs> and you kind of think, man, this, is, this must be the real life. I'm, I'm living big now. This is good stuff. But now that I'm almost grown up, I've discovered that eating is really far more than just simply nutrition and digestion. Eating can be a worship experience. And I've done some worshiping. I mean, you enter into a new dimension. Things like filet mignon and lobster tail. I mean, you discover that, wow, there's far more to eating than just getting some nutrition down your throat. A lot of people in life, they have no idea 